Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Oh, we got a fun one for you today. I've got a little scrolling text there saying sale now on. When it disappears out of one side, it's going to start at the other side. Because of my screen recording software, that may look a little glitchy, but it's a really smooth effect. Really easy to do. I've got mine linked to a little section. Of course, you can link it wherever you want. As you can see, my cursor's changed to a hand icon there. If I click on it, it's going to take me down to the little sale section here. Really easy to do. Let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Let's go down. And we'll delete the row that it's in. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's add a new row. Put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it under my title here. I'm going to use a single column in my row. And inside, I'm going to put a little code module. That's great. And before we go any further, I'm going to scoot that row up on top of our little title there. So we can see what's going on a little bit easier. Let's go to back end mode or wireframe mode over here. Left hand side, little icon. There it is right there. There's our heading. There's the row. I'm going to take the row below. Just scoot it up on top there. We'll flip back to desktop mode. Okay, so we can better see what's going on. I'll give this row a background color. And that's going to be the background color of our banner. So give it whatever color you want. I'm going to give mine a red color again. And I'm going to adjust that padding in a minute. I want mine to be full screen because I want the text to zoom all the way across the screen and then start again from the right hand side. So still while we're in the row, let's go to design, sizing. I'm going to slide the width all the way up to 100%. I'm going to copy that, Control C. I'm going to paste it in the max width down below, or you can just type it in if you want to. We've now got a full width row there. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's say this. We'll go into our little code module, and we'll do a bit of coding. Okay, well, I'm actually going to create the div that we're going to use for this today. So I'm going to open some div tags, and that's left pointy bracket, div, and right pointy bracket. And we've got a div there to put at the closing in for us. Now, this is the only part I can't put down below the video. So you'll have to do this bit yourself. It won't let me put the little pointy brackets down there. I'm going to give this div a class. Equals, open this, some inverted commas there. I'm going to call it scroller, S-C-R-O-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E and inside this div, I'm going to put a span and I'm going to call it scroller text. Left pointy bracket, the word span. We'll give it a class. And we'll close some inverted commas. I'm going to call it scroller dash text. So it knows it's the text within there. Now, if I put a pointy bracket on the end here, it's going to close out our span. And in between our opening and closing span tags there, as you can see, a closing tag is just exactly the same thing as an opening tag, just with a forward slash in front of it. Now, in between both of those is where we can put the text that we want. So I'm going to give it a bit of space. And I'm going to say, sale on now. And I'm going to copy that several times. So Control-C to copy. I'm going to put my cursor at the end. Control-V to paste. However many times you want to do it. And as you may have noticed, it's appeared right there. Great. Well, like I say, that's the only thing that I can't actually put down below. So you need to do that yourself. So just open a div, give it a class name. Then open a span inside and give it that class thing right there. Put in whatever content you want to scroll across in between the span tags there. And we're good to go. Now, everything else I can put down below, apart from my style tags, I'm going to write a bit of CSS here. So it's left pointy bracket, the word style. 
and we've got our style tag so we can write some css code in there and the actual code i'll put down below but you'll have to put your own style tags in so for our div called scroller all class names have a dot or a period in front of them when you're writing it in the code then the name then we can open and close some curly brackets i'm going to give this a width of 100 percent so it takes up all the available space 100 and the percent sign i don't want any overflow showing once it goes out the side there now i know we're going full screen here just to make sure it's not going to happen though i'm going to say overflow caroline hidden and if you do have content spilling out the side of your website google doesn't like it very much <laughs> so it's a good idea to hide any overflow if you're using it now i'll scroll the text down here i'm going to drop down below our little closing curly bracket there i'm going to put the class name in again remember dollar a period for class class name scroller dash text we can affect all of our text here now So let's open and close some curly brackets. Well, for a start, I want my text to be white in color. So I'm going to say color, FFF. That's turned it white. I think I'd like it to be bold. I mean, it's okay, but I want it to really stand out there. So I'm going to put a little semicolon. Let's say font weight. I'm going to make it bold. That makes it stand out a little bit better. If you want to increase the font size or the different font family, you can do that too with font family and choose your font style there. If you want to make it bigger, font size, let's say 20 pixels. That's a lot bigger right there. I'm actually happy with the way mine was, which will be the default style of your text, which I think is 16 pixels on here. I'm not quite sure about that, but. You can make it anything you want with font size. I want to make sure that it's displaying block. So I'm going to say display inline dash block. And we always put a semicolon on the end. If you don't, it won't read the next line of code within the curly brackets there. Now, when it goes out the end, I want to make sure that it doesn't wrap and go to two lines. So I'm going to say white space, no wrap. So it stays in one continuous line, but we want it to be scrolling across our screen. Now to do that, we've got to create an animation. So I'm going to say animation. Then we need to give our animation a name. I guess I'll just call it scroller. I want mine to run for about 15 seconds. I want it to be constant speed. So I'm going to say linear. I don't want it to be infinite. So it keeps on going and going and going. Perfect. Now we just got to create this little animation that we called scroller. We're going to do that with keyframes today. So let's just drop down below that last curly bracket there. And we've got to say at keyframes. And keyframes are a bit like stop animation. You can make things happen along a particular timeline. And our timeline at the moment is 15 seconds. So it's keyframes and the name that we gave our animation was scroller. So let's open and close some curly brackets and make this thing move. So I'm going to say at 0% basically when the page loads or second one of our 15 seconds right there. I'm going to open and close some more curly brackets. And I'm going to move it. I'm going to translate it by about 200% of its width. So I'm going to say transform, colon, translate. And we want to do it on the X axis. So it's a capital X right there. And we want to open some round brackets with no gap after that X there. And I'm going to say 200 and a percent sign. As you can see, it started scrolling already. So let's copy that. I'm going to drop down below and at the 100% mark I want it to be negative 100% so I'm going to turn that into 100 I'm going to make this negative 100% so 
So now it should speed it up a little bit. And it's going to scroll across the page. When it gets to the end there, it's going to start off back again at the top. You can adjust this amount. If you take it down, it'll start a bit further in. But I want it to be off the page when it starts. That's why I'm giving it 200. If you want it to be quicker, you can make your 15 seconds shorter. You make it 10 seconds. It's zooming across there. Or if you make it 20 seconds, it's going to be going a lot slower. I'm happy with my 15 then. Fantastic. Great. Well, we're pretty much done with all the coding part. That bar's a little bit wide for me. So I'm going to go into the row itself. Let's take some of the padding away over in design. Spacing. Let's try giving it five picks top and bottom. Just put in the five. It'll put the pixels in for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the other side too. I think that works for me. That's fine. And like I said earlier, I've noticed it looks a bit glitchy here when I've got my screen recording software going, but it is actually a very smooth transition on the site itself. Great. And finally, let's link it to somewhere. So let's save this. We'll go back into the actual code module itself, which is right here. Under content, you'll find the link. I've got a section down below with the CSS ID of sale. So I'm going to put hashtag S-A-L-E. So when you click on this, it'll link to that down there. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We've given it the ID of sale with a hashtag in front of it. I look down at this section here that looks, says welcome to our sale. It's got a CSS ID over in advance, CSS IDs and classes of sale. And when you put it on a button for a link or anything like that, you, because it's a CSS ID, you need a hashtag in front of it. CSS classes have a dot. CSS IDs have a hashtag, which is what we did. So if we've done everything correctly now, we should be good to go. Let's save our page changes down here. And we'll exit the Visual Builder. And here it is coming in from the right hand side then. It's going to take 15 seconds to zoom across our screen here. When it gets to the other side, it's going to disappear out there on the left. Once that last now disappears, it's going to start coming in from the right hand side again. Perfect. And if we hover over, we got a little hand icon. If I click on it, it's going to take us down to our sales section here. But of course, you can link it to anywhere on the web you want. Different page, different website if you want to. So there you have it, guys. There's how to create a little scrolling banner for your Divi website. And all that CSS code with the keyframes and everything I'll put down below. The only thing, like I say, you'll have to copy is the div itself. So just take a look back at that. Really easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed doing a bit of CSS coding today, have a look at our simple CSS playlist. It should pop up on the left-hand side there in a moment. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.